welcome to an American Homestead, podcasting live from deep within the Ozark Mountains at an elevation of 2,200 feet. It is 9 Eastern, 8 Central, and it's good to be back. Got a full pack show for you tonight, and as you know, Jamie is, you can see, Jamie is not here with me. Actually, she is here. She's just right over there, and she is uh, fully involved with the Homestead Conference uh, that's going on. There's a virtual uh, online conference that's happening right now, and so she is uh, knee deep into that and enjoying that, and so um, she uh, uh, is going to be with that this evening. And so you're stuck with, you know, me. And, you know, that may disappoint some of you, but I think we'll still have a good time. So stick around. Um, got a jam-packed show for you guys tonight. And um, we'll talk about uh, some things about debt, homesteading. And we'll talk about that. i got some other announcements. I'm going to do not, not, not kind of put a whole lot on the plate tonight because, you know, I kind of miss her being here. And so, um, you know, we'll just kind of keep it as an easygoing evening and then uh, talk about talk about a few things. Um, also, going to talk about some some patron giveaways that we got coming up as well. Uh, so, want to let you know about that. Plus, um, uh, a special discount for you guys. Uh, really, it's a last chance thing for you um, to get in on before it's yanked. So, I'll tell you about that. It was one of our advertisers that kind of uh, decided to just not be you know an advertiser anymore. So um, let me go ahead and click on over to, there we go. Okay, so again, Jamie's not here. She is uh, doing the Doorkeepers uh, home, uh, Homeschool Conference that is happening online. It's a virtual um, homeschool conference that's happening right now live. It started tonight. It's going to be going on for the next two or three days, I think. And so she is going to be doing that this evening. And um, if you're interested, I've been publish publicizing it or uh, publicizing it advertising it um it's free free online you can go on there register it's free to register free to attend online virtual but i've been putting the link over at my other um facebook other channels facebook page so if you want to go over there if you know where that is it's the new tutora facebook page you can go on and and get signed up for that again it's totally free and uh it's it's virtual so you, you know you can tune in uh but that's where she's at today so um other than that, you got me, and um, I guess I'll go ahead and get started with this just to let you guys know real quick. So this is the Easy Pour, the Easy Pour uh, gas can spout. And, you know, if you guys ever have bought a gas can over at Walmart, these are, I mean, they're horrendous, right? I mean, they're absolutely horrendous. But the gas can spouts that you can get at Walmart, they're just hard to operate. They were invented by a bunch of lawyers because... Um, a bunch of silly people, you know, probably set themselves on fire by using, you know, gas cans that obviously didn't weren't invented by a bunch of lawyers. And so then they had felt like they had to make impossible gas can spouts that never work. Well, you can buy these. Uh, we've been advertising these for the last uh, year or so. Um, and it's called gas. You can get them at gasspouts.com, I think, or easy pour. You just search for easy, easy pour. Uh, gas spouts, you'll find a number of places that sell these online. And so uh, the company over at gasspouts.com gave us a coupon code that we could use for our listeners, our audience, where you get 20% off. So 20% off. These things are not expensive anyway. They're pretty cheap. Okay. And they're, they're pretty well made so far. The only, after using them for over a year now, the only, uh, uh, the only thing I, I guess I have against them is that the gaskets can sometimes get warped. I don't know how that happens. Maybe it's the heat. I don't know. Um, but if you keep your gas cans outside, sometimes they, I've only had it happen to one spout. And I know they offer additional uh, replacement uh, gaskets, you know, the rubber gaskets. But that's the only – other than that, I mean, these things work awesome. They're just an amazing, amazing uh, a product. And, you know, you can get throw those old gas spouts away that you get. Anyway, so here's the deal, guys. So the bottom line is this. They're not paying me anymore. OK, um, they stopped they stopped paying me um, about six months ago, four, four or five months ago, maybe. And I said, hey, uh, are we still is anybody still using the coupon code for this? And I never got a reply. And so I emailed them again and said, hey, uh, do you still want us to put our banner ad, your banner ads on our website? And I never got a reply. And so, um, I mean, great product, but, you know, they're not paying me for it. Does it listen, guys, just because someone's not paying me. Uh, for a product, uh, you know, for, I, if, if it's a good product, I'm still going to tell you about it, right? Um, however, I'm going to take their banner ad down uh, because you know they're not, people can still use my coupon code. The coupon code is still good. It's A A H 
20 off, okay? I think it's, you can get the coupon code on my website, in AmericanHomestead.com. Look for the banner ad. It's capital A, capital A, capital H, 20 off, lowercase O-F-F. And it gets you 20% off, you know? And they're not paying me for it. I'm not getting any, I'm not getting any reimbursement or anything. I'm not, so I'm, but just, I'm just telling you that this is the last time I'm really going to be talking about it. But um, I'm not going to be promoting it anymore. But I figure, the, I know the coupon code still works because I ordered one the other day. Here it is right there. And it, I'm giving you your last chance. I mean, I'm not going to get paid for it. I'm not going to get any reimbursements for it. But if you want one of these uh, uh, gas spouts at 20% off, now is the time to go ahead and get it. Because they're probably going to take my coupon code down. So, but um, I did find a place online that sells them uh, for about the same price. And um, because here's the deal. I want to give one of these to all of my patrons. Okay. I want to give one of these to all my patrons coming up soon. Um, because I think, I think they're just awesome. And I mean, who doesn't have a gas can with a, with a crappy spout in it that you just can't stand, right? So everyone's got one of those. So I figured I'd give one of these to one of my, all my patrons, all the $20 patrons and above. And so... I tried to put an order in with the 20% off coupon on the gasspouts.com website. Well, they wanted to charge me like $200 shipping because they were charging me whatever shipping for one was times 60 because I'm ordering 60 at a time. And I'm like, 200 bucks for shipping? That's just crazy. Anyway, I found another website. I think it was a um, farm website that had the same ones. And they were only going to charge me like 8 bucks for shipping for, two, for, for 60 of them. 60 of them, right? So uh, I'm going to order it through them for all the patrons. So the patrons, if you're a $20 patron and above, you will be getting one of these in the mail. Um, um, if you want one that's 20% off, now is the last chance to use the coupon code where you can get one. And, you know, again, I'm taking their banner ads down off my website because, you know, they're not going to pay me anymore for uh, promoting these things. Even though I love them, they're amazing. And I'll keep buying them myself as long as my coupon code keeps working. So... I mean, I just bought a gas can the other day for the chainsaw, and I, that's why I ordered this one was for the chainsaw gas can. So anyway, um, enough about gas spouts. Uh, that's your last opportunity to get them. So uh, Joe H. says, killer beard, dude. Well, it, it took me about a week to grow this, but uh, and everyone keeps asking me to shave it. Listen, the day, you, the day I shave my beard is the day you can look for me up on the roof singing, I believe I can fly. I'm not going to shave it, so it just is what it is. Uh, the coffee I'm drinking tonight is caffeinated uh, because for the last week I have been up every hour or every other hour in the middle of the night to go check on the sheep. And I was just out there a little while ago. As soon as the show's over, I'll be heading back out there uh, to check on the sheep again. Uh, we had three lambs that froze to death um, so far in the last week or so, a week before that. And so I decided, you know what, I'm just going to bite the bullet and get up every hour. I'm sleeping out here on the couch. And so I don't wake Jamie up and every hour or every other hour, I just set my alarm on my cell phone and I get up and I go out there and I check on the sheep and check on the lambs, see if there's any lambs coming because it's so cold right now that if a lamb, if the lambs come, uh, there's a good chance they're going to freeze to death and the ground has been really wet. And so wet, cold and windy just doesn't do well for newborn lambs. And so I've been out there every night, multiple times a night, and getting, um, getting, checking on the lambs, make sure they're good. Now we have uh, triplets that were born on one, and so they're locked up in, in the jug right now uh, with mama, and they're doing good. And I'll probably let them out tomorrow. Be That'll be three days. I always lock them up for three days. And so the triplets will be out tomorrow. Really cute. I had The triplets are all three boys. Everyone's asking, you know, are they boys or girls? Uh, they're boys. All three are boys, which means all three are groceries. So <laughs> we're, we're going to have some, we're going to have some sheep groceries. And, um, so I'm looking forward to that. It's really, we're really disappointed. We lost some, some of the sh other lambs. Uh, we lost, we've, we've had three freeze to death so far. And so that's why I'm out there every night. And I have another mom who is probably going to drop d doubles, you know, twins. And I'm just waiting for her, you know, to make sure once she's done, I'll probably be good. We'll be good. And, I, and all the, all the sheep will have given birth. And so I'll be back in the house. Um, but I'm just keeping a close eye on everything because if she drops her sheep or her lambs, then I will, I will make sure everything's good. So just as what it is this time of year, I'm not doing winter lambing again. I'm just not going to do it. I will do spring. I'll shoot for spring or fall, but I will not do winter lambing again. I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I'm not having this. I, I don't have to worry about, 
you know, them dying out there. So spring or even summer, you know, summer, what do you have? What's the worst part about summer lambing? It's the flies, you know, out there that, you know, that sometimes they can be, the flies can be pretty brutal, especially on a newborn. Um, cause they're brutal, you know, on the adults, uh, but we're doing enough fly maintenance going on. We've done videos on that in the past. We're doing enough fly maintenance to really cut down on the flies. And uh, Arbico Organics is, an, is a company, a great company. And we're going to be looking at uh, doing some of their st strategic fly um, prevention that they've got, some organic ways. They have some amazing larvae. That's what's it called? Nematode something or other that they put down to help cut down the fly larva inside of uh, animal pens, things like that. So we'll be doing that this year. We haven't, we didn't do it last year, but last year we used the Arbico Organics uh, solar fly traps and they were spectacular. Absolutely phenomenal. So we'll be doing that again this year, along with just the regular Home Depot, big big box store uh, fly traps that you can buy and hang. Uh, those work good too. Uh, Tim puts a few of those up every year as well. So, um, okay, on to the topic of debt. Uh, so I got three emails this week that I saw, three emails this week on debt, and I figured I was, I was thinking, what, was I gonna, what am I going to do for the show tonight? And I was like, you know, why don't I do it on debt? Uh, because really the three emails all kind of went the same. You know, Zach, I have... I really want to start a homestead. I really want to leave the city, and I just see what's coming. Our world is a mess right now. I just want to get into a more rural area, and um, how can I do this? Be because my situation, Zach, means I, ha I have a lot of debt. I have a lot of stuff I owe. I owe my house. I have car payments. Um, you know, whatever. I have school loan. I still have school loan payments. Um, but you know, I have you know all these things, Zach. I have all these things that you know are going to prevent me from getting a loan. And moving, you know, to uh, somewhere more rural where I can get, you know, two or three acres. And so I'm going to turn my light down a little bit. Oh, that's off. We'll do that. There we go. Um, anyway, so I have all these things preventing me from from moving off grid. And it's really debt. It's all about debt. So how do I, prevent, how do I get out of debt? Um, I think here's the deal. I'm going to give you advice tonight that Dave Ramsey, Dave Ramsey, everyone knows Dave Ramsey, right? Dave Ramsey would consider absolutely nuts and insane. But, you know, I'm sorry. I, I don't think Dave Ramsey is, you know, perfect in all of his advice. I think he gives really good advice at a lot of times. Um, but other times I think he's absolutely insane on some of his advice. He, again, for instance, his position on gold and silver. I think you should own some gold and silver. I think it's an excellent um, uh, way to put some wealth into something that will never be valued at zero. And he doesn't believe in buying gold and silver. He thinks it's worthless. It's it's a relic of the past. And, you know, I've heard him talk about numerous times about how, you know, idiotic it is to put money into gold and silver. And I just, I absolutely think that's wrong. It's got 5,000 years of recorded history of it never going to zero. It's always worth, and especially during times of economic collapse or economic uncertainty, gold and silver has always been a lifeline. You know, it doesn't matter if you look back at World War II and all kinds of, um, you know, modern, at least in the last century, uh, examples of uh, societies and cultures when they have major economic issues. Gold and silver has always been people who have it do well. People who don't, don't. So there you go. Um, so the thing that I'm going to disagree with Dave, uh, Dave Ramsey on is bankruptcy. Um, I think he's more of the line where you never do it. It's never, it should never be a consideration. And, um, I, I have heard very rare times where he says, uh, to use bankruptcy as an option, as a financial option. Uh, we declared bankruptcy, uh, in 2012, 2013, somewhere around there. After we moved off grid, we basically did a strategic bankruptcy where, cause I didn't really own anything. Okay. At the time, um, I had debt, um, a number of things that, that, that were debt for us. And so we declared bankruptcy and it got rid of a lot of our debt. Didn't get rid of, doesn't get rid of school loans, but it did get rid of everything else. And so the court, when, when you, when you declare bankruptcy, you're basically going to go see a lawyer. He's going to take a look at your assets. You're going to fill out a, a, a form that says, okay, here's all your possessions. Give me, give me everything you own. And so you write down, it's going to have a list of things, you know, do you have any of this? Do you have any of that? Do you have any, you know, and it's going to go down the list. And so you're going to ask, you're going to, you're going to answer and say, yes, I have these, I have this many, I have that, I have this many, this much value in clothes, this much value in jewelry, this much value in this or that, whatever. 
And so that's all going to be taken, uh, examined by the court. And the court's going to be like, okay, well, you have this, you have that, you have this. This is all worth money. We're taking it from you. And any creditors who come will we'll, we'll give it to, we'll, we'll give that value, give that to the creditors. They can take it if they want to. Uh, they can take possession of it and sell it and they get, they get it. Okay, so you have, they take, they, they, the court has the ability to take anything and everything away from you. But at the end of the day, you have no debt. <laughs> so you're debt free, except, you know, unless you have school loans. You know, that's basically the only caveat. So to me, that was awesome. Um, when we went and see, to see the lawyer, the lawyer took a look at what we owned, which was a couple of cars. We had a couple, we had three vehicles, two vehicles, three vehicles that I owned, me and me and my wife owned, and they were all old vehicles. I mean, so there was no value in them really. Um, uh, we didn't have a lot of property, anything that was worth anything. Um, and so, uh, we didn't have a lot of major assets, um, a little bit of gold and silver, you know, they didn't consider that to be really anything. Um, I had some firearms, not really anything, um, nothing that the court would say, okay, that's worth money. We're taking it from you. And they're looking for, you know, high dollar jewelry items, a lot of clothes, clothes items, uh, a lot of, um, any co- vehicles, obviously new vehicles that are paid off or, or newer vehicles that are paid off that they can take and sell any houses, you know, a st- real estate, you know, stocks, bonds, you know, do you have any of those things? Uh, because those are the things that the court can take away from you and absolutely, you know, pay back your creditors. And so, Oh, I thought, somebody, I thought she was behind me. Anyway, so um, so when we when we did when we filled all the paperwork out, our lawyer basically took a look at everything and said, "You're what we call judgment proof," and that meant that there's really you know this is going to be open and shut case, and it was, you know, for us. You know, we went to the court and uh, it was a it was a woman judge, and she took one look at at what we have, and that was it. You know, um, uh, it was two wild onions homestead says they didn't take your land. This is before we had land. So we had just left St. Louis. We didn't have anything. OK, uh, we had lived on someone else's place for about, I don't know, close to a year, almost not not quite a year. And um, so we went through the, that whole process after the process was, was done. Uh, me and my, my family and my father in law and his wife, then we all went in together to uh, purchase um, some land. Okay. And you know, then it was, we basically put it into a trust and then my name was on it along with everyone else's. So now we live on a trust land. The land, the land is owned by a trust. So that was after the bankruptcy. Um, you know, my father-in-law had a lot of money saved up and so in some assets and he, you know, sold all those to help buy the land and the houses that we live in. Um, I had, uh, when we left St. Louis to live off grid, I sold everything I had. I had about $10,000 or so of, of assets, uh, money, cash that saved up, things like that. And that's what we used to get by for that first year that we were living on someone else's place. And um, the issue that I want to make that I think that it's important that people don't often look at because we have been brainwashed, I think, in our head that you know, you should never declare bank- bankruptcy. You should never, your credit score is the ultimate thing that you should always preserve in this life, in in society. Your, your credit score is the most important thing in your life. And, you know, you see it in commercials all the time. It's just fed to you in school. It's just your credit score, credit score, credit score. And I, I want to say no. I'm going to tell you that that's the wrong thinking. I, I think it's, the credit score is completely overrated. Um, it's designed to enslave you. And so, um, if you have a lot of debt, okay, if you have a lot of debt, consider bankruptcy, okay? If, if that's the thing that's keeping you from moving off grid, okay, let's just, let's just play this out for a little bit. Let's just say you have some assets that the court can take away from you, okay? You know, we walk away from a house. We, that's exactly what me and my wife did before we moved off grid, you know, before we moved into a rental house in St. Louis. We walked away from a house. It totally destroyed our credit. But see, the thing is, I'm like, we, we couldn't pay that. We couldn't pay it. You know, I, I had, uh, I had basically didn't have the job that I had anymore. I couldn't afford, uh, the, the payments. And so, you know, we were basically using our credit cards to get more into more into debt, more into debt, more into debt. And it was a losing situation. So we had to walk away and everyone around us was like, don't do it. Don't walk away. There has to be something you can do. And there wasn't, there wasn't anything we could do. Um, and so that was our option, but you know what? It was the most 
stress relieving thing in the world because I didn't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, it went back to the bank. The bank owned it. Um, you know, it's just, it's a contractual obligation. If you can't pay back what you owe, they take it from you. It's theirs. And they don't want to take it from you. They'd rather you not. But I mean, that was during the whole, um, Freddie Mae, whatever, Fannie Mac, whatever that was called. Um, that was during that whole thing. And actually, I think because they were sued by the government, they actually, because they were basically charging too much interest on anyone who was buying a home at the time. I mean, they were, they knew they were enslaving people. And so anyway, eventually they, they basically got sued by the government and we actually got a check in the mail. I think one, one, one day it was like 1500 bucks, uh, because we had overpaid interest or something like that. Lawyers get their cut, but after it was all said and done, they send you a check. And that was a whole mess. My point in all of this guys is that walking away from things is, is something that can be good. Okay. You find yourselves in dire straits sometimes. Don't be afraid to walk away. Here's the deal. It's going to be stressful. It can be stressful on a marriage. But if you and your wife are on board, okay, if you're, if you keep in mind, what's the most important thing is each other and your, your kids, if you have them, you know, you as a family unit are the most important thing. You can weather that storm. And walking away, you will not believe the amount of stress you will be free from if that happens. And, and what's it look, what's it look like two, three, four, five years down the road? Is your credit going to be completely destroyed? Absolutely. So what do you do? You do what everyone else with poor credit does. You get an apartment, you start saving money, you work hard, and you get your head above water. Okay, you get your life straightened out. And then you stop, you know, living beyond your means. That's exactly what we did. Uh, when we walked away from that house, uh, we knew we were going to walk away from the house. So before we, we basically let our payments lapse, we went out and got an apartment when our credit was still good. Um, and we got the apartment and then we just stopped paying the payments and the bank's like, Hey, what's going on? Oh, well, we're leaving. Here's the keys. <laughs> See ya. And so, um, that's what we left and we got an apartment and I mean, I don't know if you guys could, whoever's thinking about this, I don't know if that's something that a situation that you could do where you get an apartment before you walk away from something. But that was what we did. You know, we strategically tried to get out of debt as much as possible because we knew one day we wanted to start over. All that, the bottom line in all this is that know that this, it won't last forever and that one day you can start over. But you got to get out from under the ball and chain that you're in. You know, you got, you know, you know, one of the things that our lawyer told us, it was interesting. The lawyer, when we did, did the bankruptcy, he's like, he looked at everything, all the debt we had. He's like, you know, he looked at all the paperwork. He's like, you know, you guys, because we felt bad because society wants you to make, makes you feel bad. It's like, you know what? You took these things, you paid for, you said you're going to pay for these things and then you don't pay. That's like stealing, you know, but that's not it at all. That's not it at all because you look at what you paid for and then you look at the interest that you pay. You've paid, the lawyer said, you know, you've paid off years ago what you owed. The reason you still owe all this money is because of the interest. See, that's how thing that, that's how the world enslaves you is because it it okay, so it sells you something for this price, but it makes you take out a loan and then it puts an interest on you, an interest payment on attached, you know, to what you owe. And so you keep paying and paying and paying and by the time it's all done, you've paid way more than what you actually bought or or paid, you know, supposedly paid for for whatever item you pay, you bought, you purchased. It's, it's a trick. It's an enslavement tactic to, to keep you forever paying, forever. You know, if you ever go, out, go in and buy a car, they hate it when you pay cash. They hate it when you pay cash because, see, they don't want, it, they don't want you to pay cash. They want you to take out a loan. They want you to finance that car because if you finance the car, they make more money. You know, and if you go out and you buy a car, let's just say, you know, you can, they want, they'll give you a better deal if you finance, right? They'll give you, because they want you to, they'll, hey, listen, we'll bring the price down to this amount if you finance. Okay, great. We'll finance it for, you know, three years, but we'll pay it off in like two months or three months. They'll penalize you. You'll actually have to be penalized. In fact, they have most, most contracts, you can't even pay it off for like 90 days or 30 days or whatever. You have to have a, a certain window of you at least. Because they they don't want you to pay it off. They want that, that interest payment to keep coming and coming and coming. So this whole nonsense of people, because we had people accuse us of that. Oh, you're stealing. Don't you know, Zach, you're stealing? 
by declaring bankruptcy because now you're not paying back what you owe. No, it's not. You know, you're getting out from the interest. The lawyer looked at it and says, you know, you guys paid this off years ago. He says, the only thing, reason you're in debt is because you you are locked in with interest and, and they keep... They keep sticking it to you and sticking it to you and sticking it to you. You've paid, you're paying back way more than you ever borrow. And that's, that's the tragedy of our, of our economic system that we have. It's usury. It's called, the Bible calls it usury. It's called usury. And, and um, that's what we're in today. It's what everyone's in today. It's our entire financial system is based on that. So my point is when people email me and they say, Zach, man, I really want a homestead. I really want to go out and find a few acres, um, you know, five acres, two acres, one acre. But man, I just can't because I have all this debt. I have a house. I have this. I have that. I have car payments. I just can't do it. Think outside the box. Think to the extreme. What is it going to take for you to get out? You know, and don't, you know, you have all these excuses. You have all the reasons that the world tells you you can't do it. But can you do it? Can you, can you, can you and your wife say, hey, you know what? Let's spend the next 10 days packing up everything in this house, put it in a U-Haul truck, and just walk away. Just drive away. Put the kids in the back, you know, put them in the car, and drive away. Where are we going? I don't know. Let's go 30 miles outside of town. Let's find an apartment, and we'll set up shop there, and we'll start over. But Zach, I, I can't do that. I have a house. I have a job. Go get another job. Yeah, it might be rough. You might eat beans and rice for the next six months, you know, maybe even a year. But at the same time, you're going to start over completely. You're going to work hard and your family is going to stick together like a family unit and you're going to start a new beginning for your family. Now, the world's going to tell you you can't do that. I'm telling you that you can. I'm telling you that you absolutely can do it. I'm telling you that we did, we did it. That's how we did it. I know other people who've done it. You can do that. You can say, you know what, honey, let's just get, let's just spend the next 10 days and pack up the truck and let's just leave. And we'll leave the keys on the kitchen counter for the house. And we'll call the bank and say, hey, we're done. What do you mean we're done? Wait, what? What? They don't get that call very often. <laughs> what, what do you mean you're done? Well, you know, we're, we'll send you the keys in the mail. You know, we're done with the house. You can have it. You know, what about all my equity? All my equity has gone. Okay, good. Let it be gone. Start over. You know, work your butt off for the next few years and then for the next few years, work your butt off, save your money, and then find an acre, find two acres, find somebody who wants, you know, you wouldn't believe the deals that will come, you know, where I have people who say, you know, I've got five acres. I'd really like to sell it for like $10,000 if I could just find a buyer. You know, people who come up to you, I've heard of deals like that, you know, or an acre will sell for like $3,000 or $5,000 for an acre. And you can buy like some guy's got two acres he wants to sell. You can start a homestead on two acres. You know, because you're, you've left and you have all this money saved up now after you've been working for three years, starting a new job. Yeah, you know, the cost of living is less. You're not making as much because you're starting over, um, you know, whatever. But, man, you can do it. The world's going to tell you that you can't. I'm telling you that you can. Uh, and then find a lawyer. And if you want to do bankruptcy, do bankruptcy. Uh, yeah, you may have to give up some of your assets. If you have paid off cars and they're new, they're newer cars, they're going to be gone. The court will take them. If you have stocks and bonds and 401k, yeah, that you might lose that. You know, they may take all that from you, but you're starting over. And again, I know I can hear it right now. People are like, Zach, you're absolutely crazy. Do you know if you have that much in your 401k, then pull it out anyway and pay off your debt. I mean, do you, you know, do you really think the economy is going to be that good forever? You know, your 401k is a gamble anyway. If you can do it and start over a new life, but Zach, that's my retirement. What do you want? What, what do you want your retirement to be? You want to, after age sixty-five, do you want to go down to the Bahamas and sip daiquiris on the beach for the rest of your life? Is that was that really what you want to do? Then okay, take your keep your four hundred one k and you know live that dream. But if you want to live on a homestead, you know. Anyway. Um, Old 60 Armory says, I got 22 acres for sale for $27,000. That sounds like a good deal. I don't know where it's at. I mean, it may be like in the middle of the Arizona desert, but that sounds like a pretty good deal. Benjamin Turner says, and losing all the stuff is actually freeing in the end. You have no idea. That is so true. Benjamin Turner. Yes, that is absolutely true. Losing all that stuff and getting rid of it or having the court take it away from you. That is a huge weight and burden lifted off your shoulders 
huge weight and burden lifting up. You know, every time my wife, you know, we ha- I'm I'm not a hoarder. You know, um, my family. I don't come from a family of hoarders, but we do tend to hold on to things in my family. Um, I tend to be more sentimental about things, but my wife is not. She's like, get rid of everything. And she's always getting rid of stuff. You know, there's always a box of things she's getting rid of. And um, so um, it's harder for me, but it's easy for her. And so um, when she, she loves getting rid of stuff, it's just, it's the most freeing thing for her to get rid of things. Um, and so that was the way it was. I mean, you know, we walked away from the house. She's like, oh, it was the most burdensome thing. But when we did that, it was like this giant weight lifted off of her. This giant stress reliever had just gone away. So um, if you're just joining in, we're talking about debt and homesteading. I got three emails this week. And it's an often it's an email that comes in quite often. Basically, you know, the, the email goes something like this that, you know, Zach, I really want to do homesteading. I really want to get a couple acres out in the middle of nowhere. I'd really like to do what you're doing, um, but I just have too much debt. How do I get out of debt? And I'm telling you, it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen overnight. But if you really want it, don't be afraid to do extreme, take extreme measures to walk away, to declare bankruptcy, to just give up a lot of stuff. Um, if you declare bankruptcy, yeah, the court's going to take a whole bunch of stuff from you. Great. Let them take it away. But at the end of the day, you're debt free. But Zach, I don't have a house. I don't have a car. I don't have, well, you know what? Go live in an apartment somewhere, you know, go li- go get a junker at, at the local, you know, rent a wreck or whatever, and drive that. You know, go move out 30 miles out of town and get a new job. You can do it. You just have to think extreme. It's exactly what we did. And everyone called us nuts along the way. But, you know, it was years ago. But, you know, we left in 2012. What is it? 2019 now. I can't believe. <sighs> it just seems like yesterday. But um, we did it, you know. And um, we had the added benefit of having her parents along with us. That really helped. Uh, because they had a lot more savings, they had a lot more assets that they could use, and he basically sold it all and, you know, went in with us, and, you know, he's still out there building part of our homestead now. He's building a new building. So, I mean, it, it, you know, that, that really helped us out a lot. But me and Jamie were determined back in St. Louis that even if we had to do it ourselves, we were going to do it ourselves. We were going to get out of the city because she could see and I could see the damage that living in that city had on our marriage. Uh, we were we were scared to death about how, what, how it was going to affect our kids. And so if we had to move out to middle America, middle of nowhere somewhere, and um, live however we could figure it out, we were going to do it because we didn't care. Uh, so, but we had the added benefit of her parents coming along and that thing. So maybe, maybe that could be an option for you. Maybe there is somebody in your family you could team up with, you know, some in-laws or, um, uh, you know, parents or people who would want to do what you're doing. They want to do it too. I get lots of emails, lots of emails from people who are elderly uh, who say, Oh, I really want to do what you're doing, but I'm 60 years old and I just don't have it in me anymore. I, I don't have, I don't have the energy to do what you do. Um, you know, we couldn't do it without Tim and Joanne, Tim and Joanne couldn't do it without us. Uh, so we make a great team. Um, maybe there's someone in your family who would really like to do this, but you know, they don't have a, you know, anyone to jump off with. So, I mean, it's an option. Um, that's how it worked. Just, just how it worked out for us. But either way, I mean, if you're a young family, you can do this, you can do it. You just have to be motivated, figure about starting over. Starting over is okay. Um, the farm alarm says you aren't nuts. <laughs> I don't think I am. I mean, you know, people thought we were nuts. People, my, you know, people in my family, lots of people called us crazy, but you know, it's, it's okay. You know, now we're, we're debt free and we're living in the middle of nowhere. I still have my school loans to pay off. If anyone wants to pay off my school loans, I will be in your indentured servant for seven years. You know, my guest, be my guest. I'll probably be paying those school loans off till I'm 60. Um, I went to a really expensive school. Uh, so, um, if you're not familiar with Full Sail University, um, there's MIT, when it comes to graphic design and, um, and graphic arts, uh, video game design, things like that, that, you know, and I'm not kidding you, this is how they rank. So MIT, New York University and Full Sail. That's, it's, it's a very expensive school, but they always have the latest equipment, the latest gadgets, the latest software, the latest, if it comes out like, um, Maya, if you've never heard of Maya, it's a graphic design software, Maya. And I think a copy of Maya back when I was in school went for around $7,000, something like that. 
3D Studio Max went for about 3000 but you didn't get all the bells and whistles unless you spent money on all the additional plugins that went with it. Um, but I think Maya went for like seven or $8,000. And so when Maya, when an upgrade came out for Maya, um, you know, you had to pay an additional, you know, seven or $8,000. Well, when, when the new updates came out for Maya, the school had them like the next day. I mean, they, they had the latest equipment, the latest software, the latest everything, computers, whatever. They had it for their students. So it's, 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 um, it's an amazing school. And those who go to Full Sail, there's a lot of bad rep about Full Sail. Um, and if I had to do over again, I still would have went, I guess, because that's where I met my wife But um, in Florida. But um, you get what you put into that school. I mean, there was, there was nights at 1 and 2 in the morning. I was in the labs, and I was working you know, trying to build a portfolio and, uh, it paid off. So, um, Maya plus massive equals Lord of the Rings. I have no idea what you're talking about. Big family homestead. <laughs> yeah. I've been watching some of his videos lately. He, they crack me up. Um, um, I'm about to start a local school to become a full stack developer. A local school to become a full stack developer. Listen, I'm a developer, but I'm like on the graphic end of the de development. You know, I'm not a big coder. Okay, I, I do, I do, I do enough coding to get by with graphics. XAML um, was an, was the most coding I ever really did, but that kind of fizzled out. Microsoft didn't do that right. I don't know what happened there, but. Um, finished compost girl yet? No need for rabbit manure when you got that lady. I don't, I see, I saw, I saw that, I posted that on Facebook. I don't know what that meant, but is that, I don't even know if that's a real book, Compost Girl. Um, I haven't even looked it up. I need to look it up because I can't imagine. Ozarks are horrendous, not a good place for the masses to go. Don't be fooled into doing so. What are you talking about? You know, um, I don't know where else, I don't know where is, where is there a better place in this country to homestead at? Um, First of all, the Ozarks, whether it's Missouri or Arkansas, low property taxes, low cost of living, low population density, massive amounts of rainwater. Okay. In fact, I think the in the Arkansas Ozarks where I live, we are like in the top 10 for rainwater. So, I mean, you know, there's places in Hawaii that don't get as much rainwater as we do. Um, you know, there are places in Hawaii that get more, but there are places in Hawaii that don't. Uh, it, it's, we had, this is, I can't imagine a better place to be for homesteading. Um, if you're, if you're looking for an off grid, you know, I don't know where else you'd rather be. Um, let's see. How do you feel about the Cumberland gap? Um, I I've heard of that. I think Johnny cash wrote a song about the Cumberland gap, right? Dun, 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 dun. Or maybe that was a, that was a different gap. I, I don't know. I think Johnny cash wrote a song about a gap. What are your thoughts about downsizing to shipping container homes? Shipping container homes look amazing. Uh, I've, I've seen lots of people do some amazing things with shipper container, container homes. And we even looked into that. Uh, but I think it became a fad. Back when, back when we looked at it, it was definitely a fad. And the prices on shipping container homes were going through the roof because so many people wanted them. Uh, and I think it just wasn't near what we had seen what people were paying for them before and so they, they were jacking the prices up now i think that's kind of subdued a little it's it's slowed down a little bit so maybe prices on shipping container homes have come down so i don't know look into it but there is some amazing things that people have done with shipping container homes uh i'll caution you with this with this i i've seen a lot of people who've tried to bury shipping shipping containers to live underground in them and they almost always collapse they're not meant to be buried the, the pressure of the soil on those square sides will push them in uh they will not last but um if you're doing them above ground i've seen some amazing i mean look on pinterest there's some, people have done some amazing design on shipping container homes they look they look great uh jenna woodson see you at the conference see how amazing arkansas is yeah come to the conference we're gonna have a great time Zach and my neighbor doesn't even know it. Ha, huh. uh, maybe I don't. Um, there, are you, maybe you're the person I did an email, uh, video on. I had people contact me this week. Someone said he moved to Huntsville, and I haven't. I couldn't find his email. After I went back home, I tried to look for his email. I couldn't find it. It's just I lost his email. Um, 
You spend 40 years working for someone. You have to ask permission for everything you want to do, days off, raises, promotions, and so forth. All for maybe, all for what maybe 10, 15 years if your if your health holds. Yep, that's about right. When you retire, it's all you buy got left. Let me pop out the chat so I can see better. <clears throat> all right, if you have questions, put them in all caps so I can see them. Zach, is your well run on solar? No, our well is run on rope and a pulley system. <laughs> so, um, we have two wells. One well is dug. It was dug back in the 1850s, and um, it's always full of water. And then we have another well that we drilled when we moved here, uh, not too far from it, maybe about, I don't know, 10, 15 feet from the original 1850s well, 19th century well. And we drilled that. It goes down about 160 feet, and it always has water in it, although recently it smells a little bit like sulfur. Um, but we don't use it a lot because now we have about 5,000 gallons of rainwater catchment and we collect all of our rainwater uh, and we, we, we filter it with the Berkey. So uh, the rainwater is so much softer uh, than the water that comes out of the well because it's hard water. It's mineral. It's heavy in minerals. And um, so if it's hard on your skin, it's hard on your hair, your hair will become brittle. So uh, trust me, if you want to do rainwater collection, it's going to be, you're going to love rain, rainwater collection way more than you're going to ever appreciate the well water. If you, if you had to, yeah, you'd do well water. But I'm telling you for washing, and it's just, it's heavy of minerals, okay? And so um, um, we, we're now we're just doing rainwater. It's all we're using is rainwater. We're not even using our wells all that much. Let's see. How do I get info on the conference? Um, uh, well, well, listen, guys, we'll keep it homestead related, okay, for this video. Uh, but if you want information on that, it's Isaiah4610.com. Isaiah4610.com. It's going to be in Northwest Arkansas. <clears throat> Best PC for developing, in your opinion? Oh, there is no right answer to that. That's like, you know, what's better, Ford or Chevy? Uh, best PC for developing? Just get the best processor you can get get the best video card you can get and get get it as much hard drive space as you want you know that's 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 for development that's it get a workstation get a if you want get a gaming laptop but get it you know spend as much money as you can that's just, that's basically it can you do a video on how to set up your homestead is there a method to where you should set up your barn water etc uh yeah so basically here's how this uh peace in paradise wants to know where's jamie tonight so i i mentioned at the end at the beginning of the video she is doing the the doorkeepers conference so she is here she's back there and she's doing the door keep she's watching the doorkeepers conference it's a homeschool conference and so that's where she's at for, for those of you who tuned in late um when it comes to setting up your homestead where to put your barn, where to put your well, where, you know, where to put your houses, you know, animals, all this stuff. Think strategically. Think about where your roads are going to come in, uh, you know, where do you want your fences to go. Um, it's better to just get a, get an overhead map of Google, sketch it out, and, and figure, okay, I'm going to put this here, this here, the road's going to be here. So that way you have where your animals are going to be already pre-planned. Um, you know, I, I think I've, we've all said, you know, me, Tim, and everyone here is, have, have kind of said we wish we would have planned that better um, because now we're just kind of piecemealing it together and, and we're trying to figure that out after the fact, after we have things already in place. And so, um, you know, just think strategically about where you want things to be. Uh, and really what it comes down to is fencing and animals so that you can drive in and out of your homestead efficiently and quickly if you want to. Uh, we're all rainwater and Berkey too. Red Dutch's farm says, yep. Rainwater, 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 rainwater is good guys. Especially if you live in a place where there's lots of rain, how do you filter your rainwater for drinking? Or do you guys, if I miss your, uh, question in all camp, uh, in all, in all, if I missed your question in all caps, please put it in again and I'll, I'll try to get my best to get to it. If I miss it, I'll get, let me get to this one. Angela, Angelica McDuff says, do you have a hands on boot camp to teach others to live off grid? Oh, we've thought about that, but, and you know, when we first moved here, we had an awful lot of people come out and visit us. And anytime someone wanted to come visit us, we said, okay, how do I put this? There's some weirdos out there. We don't do that anymore. Um, so we don't, we don't, we thought about doing like a boot camp. um, type thing. Now what we do is we do a Sukkot festival. Um, again, we're going to try to stay homestead related here, folks. 
um, once a year where people come out and camp, but we don't do like a boot camp. We don't allow people just to come out willy nilly. I get emails all the time. Hey, Zach, we'd love to come out and visit your homestead sometime. I mean, that's just ridiculous. I mean, who invites some, who, who invites themselves over to someone's home? I mean, it's just, you know, no, when I get those emails, they just go in the, into the delete file, delete, delete, delete. Hey, Zach, I really want to, I would love, I can't wait to come out and visit your place. When's a good time? <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> delete, delete, delete. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. How have you secured your property perimeter? Uh, we have fencing. We have, um, I won't talk about my security for obvious reasons because it's my security, but we have security, but I won't talk about security. Um, but I, I think it's a good thing to have security. Um, X10.com is a great place to start for do-it-yourself home security. You can also use a lot of those uh, tools on a homestead, even an off-grid homestead. Um, X10.com. So X, the letter X, 10.com. If you're a do-it-yourself guy, you're going to love that website. You can do, you can set up, I've been using that stuff for years, um, but uh, you can you can do a lot of things with uh, game cameras, um, lots of, lots of, cool technology out there today wireless technology you can do today as long as you have a fast high-speed internet connection um uh, power over ethernet cables is a good technology if um i don't know if maybe some of you guys really um know if you're into technology they have ethernet cables that that will actually run power on them so you can do a lot with that without going into any further details um you know you guys, that's something you guys got to figure out. I'm not going to talk about really what, how we have our security, but we, you know, it's good to have security. How is Springfield, Missouri or Stratford, Missouri area for homesteading? And there's a lot of people I know up in the Springfield area, uh, Stratford area. Listen, Southern, you know, anywhere, I'm not saying anything bad about above Highway 70. So you take the state of Missouri, it's divided north, south. Uh, it's called the I-70 corridor. Anything below 70, when you get down below 70, um, you start to get into areas that are considered the Ozarks, okay? Um, and those are great places to live. Very rural. I mean, there's places that are great places to live above 70, too, uh, but that's not the Ozarks. So when you get below 70, you have um, the I-70 corridor in Missouri. You start to get into the Ozarks. You have great uh, rainfall areas there, great rural areas with low population density, low property taxes, low um, low amounts of ordinances and zoning regulations, which are key when you want homesteading areas. Uh, but you have to look around because you might stumble into a place that has a lot of zoning and a lot of ordinances. You got to look around. You got to do your homework. That's the biggest thing when it comes to homesteading. Do your homework when it comes to zoning and ordinance regulations, things like that. Um, but most of the Ozarks, you're going to find low population density, low zoning regulations and ordinances, uh, low property taxes, very low property taxes, low um, taxes in general. Um, although the area I live in has high sales tax, you know, our, our, and it's keeping our county poor, which I like, because the less money they have, the less regulations they can pass on you. It seems like they don't have the, they don't have the ability to enforce anything, uh, crazy laws. Um, yeah, rainwater is the biggest one, though. Rainwater. Good amount of rainwater here. The, the two, I think some of the two largest aquifers are located in uh, the Ozarks, in the, in the world, in, in North America, you know, for sure. Uh, good point. I'm no commenting. I'm not sure. If I, missed your, if I missed your question, please put it in all caps again so I don't miss it. How about a video showing how to set up a rain catchment? We've got videos on that. Um, go back through our archives. You can find some of those, uh, some of our rain tanks. I think there's a couple of different ones. One, what's the title of that? Uh, you're not going to make it without water or something like that. I, I, some of these videos I just need to do again uh, because I know people don't go back in the archives. But I'll, I'll try to do something showing our rain tanks. Right now, a lot of our rain tanks are frozen. We have a lot of our water turned off. Tomorrow, it's going to get really cold, really cold tomorrow night. So we're looking down in the teens. I know some of you guys up north, you guys are going to be experiencing single digits and definitely in the teens. So um, it's going to get really cool. That's why I'm out there with the sheep all the time, making sure they're okay and they're staying warm. So I'm basically building uh, straw bale forts in my sheep shelter to keep the wind out, uh, to keep them kind of bundled in there so that they can stay warm. I may, I may tonight, maybe, would you, I'll ask you, 
would you guys like me if I can? I don't know if I'm sure it'll reach down there, but I may take my phone down there uh, to the sheep shelter and do a live uh, YouTube video from the sheep shelter. Would you like that? Would you want me to go down there tonight and do that? You guys can see the baby lambs. I can do that. Um, and kind of show you how I'm how I'm building up uh, some of the straw bales and to keep them warm, especially tomorrow night. I'm going to be doing that. Not so much tonight, but tomorrow night. It's going to be really cold. But if you want me to do a live video, I will try to do that after the podcast and just um, take you down to the sheep shelter and show you some of the baby lambs. They're cute. They are really cute. But okay, yes, 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 yes. Okay, very good. I'll I'll try to do that after I'm done here. Because I got to go down and check on them anyway. I've been checking on them once every hour, once every two hours. And so I've got to just keep tabs on them. Would a barn be unrealistically for sheep? I'm not sure I understand your question, April Ray. Um, most people I know who have sheep have like a lean-to barn or some sort of structure. You want to have something for them to get into, especially when they're lambing. Okay, You do not want them just laying their lambs down on the ground. Um, unprotected, you know, especially during the wintertime, if they're lambing in the wintertime. Again, I'm going to try my best not to lamb in the wintertime anymore. We're going to try to schedule it. Uh, the ram that I have now, I'm going to butcher him, and we're going to use, I'm going to save his pelt. He has an absolutely beautiful pelt. Uh, it's just fantastic. So, um, and all the pelts that we sent last winter should be arriving any day now. They've had them for over a year, so we're going to hopefully be getting those back soon. I've got some a deer pelt and a couple sheep pelt, things like that. So we're hopefully we'll be getting those back soon. But uh, there's absolutely, the, the ram I have, his pelt is absolutely beautiful. So I can't wait to save that one. And we'll be doing uh, a butchering for that. How are the sheep doing worm load? So worm load. So um, I, I assume, Gary, that's what you're asking. Um, again, if I miss your question, and I saw I skipped a few, please repost it. How are the sheep doing on worm loads now? Um, we don't have that problem, really. And I don't do any worming for them. Uh, I may feed them some tobacco. Uh, we've done that before, maybe some garlic. Um, I'll put a little bit of uh, basic H in their water, just a couple drops of basic H. You know, if you don't know what basic H is, it's a, a soap product that's basically a derivative of, of a soy. It's supposedly a natural product. Now, no one knows the real recipe for basic H, but it's been out since like the 1950s. Okay. So it probably doesn't have a whole lot of crazy chemicals that they put in stuff today because it's been out. It came out after world war II, I think. So basic H has been very famous amongst farmers as a wormer. Okay. And it really, all it is is a soy based soap, you know, long before soy was GMO, everything's GMO. So I think soy today about 90, if I, if I looked it up the other day, so I think it's 94% of all soy products in the United States are GMO. So liquid aminos, for instance, for example, are a soy-based product, but it's not GMO. Um, so most soy products today, almost 94%, I think is what it was, are GMO. Basic H is a natural, they say natural soap based on, it's a, comes from soy. I think it's, they don't give you out the real recipe, but it's been famous amongst farmers as being a very good wormer for livestock. And so uh, a couple times a year, I will put a couple drops of uh, basic H in their water. And I don't have any problems. Don't have any problems. Now, this is a heritage breed sheep, right? A St. Croix and Dorper mix is about 90, 90 and 95% St. Croix, 5 to 10% Dorper. And I get them from Shalom Makers. Many of you guys remember his channel. He doesn't really post a lot these days, but he's an absolute genius when it comes to sheep and all this stuff. So um, uh, we have uh, some sheep from his place. Again, a St. Croix, Dorper mix, and they're a heritage breed. Before we started with sheep, we had uh, Shropshire, which is a commercial breed. Completely different, you know, ball of wax there, folks. The, the commercial breeds are, are absolutely horrible. They're just, I mean, you have to worm them every 30 days just to keep them alive. And we were, ours, we said, we're going to get these sheep. And because we're new, we don't know anything. We're, we're stupid, right? And so we get these sheep and we're going to raise them naturally. No wormers. And we're going to use natural products like uh, 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 apple cider vinegar and all these different things we had. And didn't matter. They just kept dying. Falling over dead, one after the other. We have not, we have not lost one sheep to worming. 
Okay, we've we've lost some lambs, you know, this year to freezing because they froze before, you know, basically froze when they hit the ground. Uh, but we've never lost a sheep to worming or anything like that. We, you know, we haven't lost any sheep to any disease or anything. Uh, heritage breed, they're so much more hardier. Um, yeah, yeah, they're just way better. <clears throat> they're they're more better. And people say more better, and I say less worser. Well, I'll explain that one day. Um, can Jamie do a Q and A on homeschooling? So there's a couple people who are going to be having her having her on her show for homes their show for homeschooling. Um, I'll try to do do something about that. We'll try to publicize that when it happens. Are you still using STL for tanning? STL. I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, we sent all of our t- our furs for, to uh, USA Fox and Furs. That's where we send all of our our pelts for tanning. Do you put oil on your lamb face to keep off bugs? I am a city girl, but I've heard people do this. I have never heard people do that. So, um, put, put lamb oil, oil on your lamb face to keep off bugs. Mm. Uh, basic H works as as good for that too. Like I'll take, if I take basic H and I'll spray down my, my during when the, when the, the, they're like, they're not flies. They're like little flies. They're like, I don't know what they're called, but they just drive my cow nuts. And so I'll go out there and I'll spray my cow with basic H and the flies just go away. They don't like it. They don't like it at all. Um, what was the name of that fish sauce you spoke of a few weeks back? Um, it was a uh, fish sauce. You get it at Walmart. It's made with anchovies. It's kosher. I think it's just called fish sauce. You know, Thai Kitchen is the brand name, I think. Thai Kitchen. Have you ever made buckskin tunics? Nope. Um, I do have some buckskin coming. That's what I'm waiting for a delivery on for some bucks, uh, for some deer skin we sent uh, off last year. A good criminal will kill the Wi-Fi first. I guess he's talking about security. Um, we have, I again, I'm I'm, a, I'm an internet geek, you know, and so I have pretty good. I think a pretty good, um, you know, nothing's hack proof, but I have some pretty good internet security. Um, how's the market in Arkansas for raising alpacas? I know a lot of people do that. The only thing about alpacas and what's the other one? What's the other one? Alpacas and, um, there's another one, not camels, alpacas. Anyway, you have to shave them and I don't like doing that. We did that with our first sheep, uh, Shropshire's. You have to shave the wool and I didn't like doing that. I hurt the sheep too often. Um, just didn't like that. Llamas. Yeah, llamas. Llamas. <clears throat> yeah, you have to shave them. So I don't like, I don't like, I don't like doing that. Um, let's see. Best homestead livestock for small area. Chickens. That might be profitable. Yeah. That's a little bit tough. See, here's the deal. Sheep actually are pretty profitable. If you can grow enough of them, there's enough buyers out there. Like, um, I'm going to try to do a video. I'm going to St. Louis soon. I have to visit my mom. Uh, she has cancer. So I'm, I'm looking forward to going to visit and spend some time with her. But there is a, um, a meat shop in St. Louis called Kenrick's, I think. And uh, we bought a leg of lamb back in like 2010 there. 2011. Maybe it was, for, I think it was for Passover or something. And we bought a leg. It was like a hundred bucks for one leg of lamb. It was a rear leg. And it, I think... I don't remember if it was deboned or not. Maybe it was deboned. I'm not sure. But it was a hundred bucks for one leg. A sheep has four, you know. That's like four well, you know, lamb the, the front shoulder roast. But you can debone a shoulder roast. I bet it's at least a hundred bucks, maybe sixty. And that was back in 2011. What is it now? I'm gonna go do I'm gonna see if I can go to Kenrex and do a video and just see how much it cost for a leg of lamb. Yeah expensive you can make some money on sheep um and not to mention i'm not even really trying i'm just trying to raise sheep for my own family's consumption because it's good meat we love the taste of it and um you know i know where it comes from i know what's put into it you know we want more videos with jamie yes right now again jamie is back in the back and she's doing uh you know watching the 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 was a doorkeepers conference that's what she's doing today tonight so um she's doing that 
But she, we have an, I have a video that we did the other day. She made Asian soup. It's already recorded. I have to finish editing it. Um, but she's got some other uh, videos coming out too. So, you know, stay tuned for those. Uh, let's see. Been brain tanning for years. That's how we made a living for a while. Um, I had never done the brain tanning. Or maybe I did. I've tried oak tanning. I've tried some. I think I did try brain tanning a while back. I've never gotten any of my other tanning projects to work. They all, they all just... I re- a couple years ago, I lost a pelt from a, from a beaver that I had trapped here, and I was really it was a really it was going to be a really nice pelt, and I lost it. It just didn't. It was oak tanning. It was oak tanning with that, and all the the hair just fell out. I was very upset. All right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna. Um, is there a comparable meat to sheep? I mean, I like beef. I like good beef steak, but um, no. I mean, I love I love every meat has its own taste. Venison, sheep, goat. Uh, I can tell the difference between goat and sheep um, and you know, and beef. You know, I can tell the difference. How many minimal acres do you recommend for a homestead with up to eight people starting out? I mean, you can do it on one acre. You know, it's up to you. Do what you can afford. Uh, don't go into debt. That's the whole purpose about this video, guys. Don't go into debt. If you can just do it on, you can do a lot with one acre. You can put a family of eight on one acre, have enough room for chickens a good sized garden and maybe I don't know, probably not sheep unless you're going to do a lot of hay, but definitely chickens, definitely a large garden and have, you know, room for a number of houses, a couple of houses. If it's eight people, you know, you can do that on one acre. You can do a lot with one acre. I think people think like they have to get a homestead. It has to be a hundred acres. It has to be, you know, 50 acres. You don't have to have that. You can do one acre and do amazing things with one acre. There's lots of people on YouTube, lots of stories, lots of people on the internet who've done amazing things with one acre. So, I mean, two or three acres, sky's the limit. You know, five acres, you can do, you can have some, you know, some small livestock, maybe a miniature milk cow. Uh, maybe a couple of heads of sheep along with chickens in a big garden. I mean, you can do all those things. Uh, you really can. So, all right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. I'm going to go ahead and st- end the show, but uh, really in- enjoyed you guys being here and um, um, looking forward to coming back next week. Jamie will be back next week and um, we'll get back off to where we were, where we were. So we'll get back to normal is what I'm saying, I guess. So I had a good time with you tonight and um, I'm going to try to take the phone. I'm going to go down to the sheep shelter. If it reaches, I think the Wi-Fi will reach down there. And we'll do, um, I don't know how good the connection will be. I'll show you the sheep. So I'll be back online here in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Um, and I think you'll enjoy seeing the new lambs. In them. They're really cute. They're gro- you know, they're all boys. So groceries, right? Groceries. Okay. All right, guys. Good night. Thanks for tuning in. Give me a like. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on the Homestead. Bye. <laughs>